Si vous me regardez, qui je regarde moi Quand vous ne savez pas quoi dire, vous baissez la tête et vous touchez votre front. Quand vous perdez le contrôle, vous haussez les sourcils. Et quand vous êtes troublé, vous respirez par la bouche. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I am joined by my co-hosts. Abraham. And Nick. How you doing tonight? I'm good. Doing really good. Good. I think this is the first time that it hadn't even been an hour since I watched the movie and to talk about it. Yeah, so you're fresh, fresh. I'm you're fresh, fresh, man. I watched it this you're morning. You're Baja fresh. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Sorry, cut you off. I woke up this morning, started to watch a t- uh, streamer, and I said, what am I doing? I need to watch a movie. And then I said, what am I doing? I got to watch this movie. Mm. So then I watched this movie, and I, I, I was thinking about it all day, God. almost. Once it ended? Once it ended, yeah. Okay. I will, That's a good thing. This movie is so beautiful, though, because I would think about specific shots, and I'm just like, gosh, man, I wish I was there. Yeah, it's stunning. And it's yeah. there's one shot that I think of, and it's just overlooking this beautiful scenery. And I'm just like, man, imagine a picnic right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or just like climbing around on the rocks, going yeah. swimming. Yeah. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. You know, I had a uh, conundrum with this because That's I was... a big a, word. What is that? Like a problem. Yeah. Like a, I had a really hard decision to make. I was on the plane and I was actually really surprised at how many great options they had for movies. Okay. Like they had... Usually a, that's not a thing. Cause there's on like, the plane? Yeah, there's a genre. Yeah. There's sometimes a genre of movie that people call airplane movies. Where you put it on, it's kind of trash, but it's no. like something that you could just watch to pass the time. Dude, they had, they had it like recent movies like Come On, Come On. They had all the Matrixes. Bro. They Wait, had what? Every time I've been on a plane, I've never watched a movie. Yeah, no, they have little built-in screens on the back. At least the one I went on. I was very surprised about it. He's got the bougie planes. Bro, you Dude, went on a bougie plane. It was funny because we were walking through. We're at the very back, and one of my coworkers was like, "I was like, Dude, they have they have TVs here. Look at this." And he goes, "Yeah, keep walking. They'll stop. We're at the back. You know oh, what I mean?" Okay. And I was like, "No, bro. I think they really have it." We sat down, and they even had TV shows and all that stuff. That's crazy. But man, <laughs> the conundrum I was having was this was this was the movie on there. Oh, what? it was. It was. It was there, and I was like, "What a strange pick." To to watch on the back of an airplane <laughs> headrest, yeah. especially if you're sitting in between two people and they're like, "What are you watching, bro?" Yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> I was smack in the middle of two people beside me, and I was like, "Do I want to put this on right now, dude?" What was the wildest movie you saw in there? Oh gosh, wildest movie! Th- I mean, every, anything you could think of. I mean, we've done. There was a bunch of movies we did on the podcast. There was Goodfellas. There, there was wow. uh, No Country for Old Men. Wow. There was, I mean, p- throw out a movie. Throughout a movie, it was there. It was Fast and Furious. Oh no! It's, it, there were newer movies. Huh. What? What? Where'd you fly? Like what? What airline? It was Delta. Oh uh, okay. Delta, Delta got the hookup. Delta got the hookup. And the the other thing too about it was, they only had the the wires. Oh, audio for the, jacks. Yeah, the audio jacks for the headphones, and I had my AirPods. Uh, so I, I put on a movie. I put on Quiet Place too. Nice. Because it was already silent, and I just. I watched it. <laughs> There's this really old lady by me. She was going, is this the one where they have to be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I, but I really, I was like, oh, I should watch it. I should watch it here. But Did they give you any snacks? Yeah, all the time, man. Biscoff cookies, pretzels, almonds. They even had these little like uh, like granola fruit bars. Mm. And they gave us like a bunch. Delta's where it's at. I've Dude, only, I've... Okay, there's one. I think I flew. It was called the first time I ever flew. I was to Oklahoma to meet uh-huh. family I've never met, and we flew on some airline called Frontier. I heard Frontier, and, and? it was they they didn't even call their planes planes. They called them Airbuses. <laughs> so that just gives you a a feeling for like the quality there. 
Yeah. And then um, the next time I flew on an airplane was, I think they were both Alaska Airlines. Oh, okay. But they, I never got the luxury of having like the, the TV thing. No. Oh. I've just I'm saying, all I've and I've flown basically almost first class, and but it's always Mexican Airlines that I fly on. So maybe that's why. Mm. I don't know. But I do. I will say I get more better snack. I get way better snacks than you did. Because when I first fly, I would always take a, a Sprite and a Kit Kat. Oh, yeah. Okay. We had the bit. Have you ever had a Biscoff? Yeah. They're have good. you had Biscoff <laughs> butter? Yes. <laughs> Cookie butter. <laughs> mm. But I was really impressed with the movie selection because I was going through and I was like, oh, man, I want to watch that. They even had uh, the new Spider-Man, No Way Home. Wow. Really? The new Spider-Man. They I've had all, seen it. all of them. Every single Marvel movie you could think of. The Eternals was on there, everything. And I, I was having a really difficult time choosing. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. I didn't expect to be so, like, to have so much options here. Yeah, the stereotype with airplane movies is usually, like, Aquaman. Or, like, <laughs> Aquaman was like there. <laughs> drunk parents. Or, like, bad teacher. Yeah. You know, like, all those, like, movies where you're like, come, well, come on, what is yeah. this? What is you it? know? I was Robert watching Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <seriously. laughs> no, Robert Taylor's good, though. <laughs> I was watching Quiet Place, and I look over to the lady to my right, and she was watching a like an He's HGTV talking. home ran over a renovation makeover thing, and I was like, I was watching her, and she's, she was just loving it, dude. That's funny. Yeah. You know what? I I hate to say this, but you know what? A lot of old people watch, and I actually started to like it. Antique Roadshow on PBS. Oh, okay, Grocho. dude. There's some cool stuff that you find. That's what I'm saying. saying. There's there's some people who sell some or who come get things appraised, but they are bougie as heck. Like I saw one that some guy just had a a regular watch. It was just like a nice. I think it was a Swiss watch, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I I bought it when I was in the military. Never wore it." Yeah, and they appraise it like right on the spot, right? And they appraise it right on the spot, and he had all the forms for me. A million it. bucks. No. More. I think it was like three point seven. Because <laughs> he's never worn it, he had all the documentation for it. He goes, he said, uh, "Sold, dude. Give me the money." <laughs> he was like, "For a normal buyer, it would be about one million, but since he has all the documents and all how yeah. mint condition it is, three point seven appraised." And I said, "That's insane." I'm gonna start looking for things that I got in my room. Maybe I'll get them appraised. <laughs> <laughs> Too rich for my blood, dude. Uh, I was thinking of like pawn shop. Or something like I that. Where he goes, pawn shop. Best dude, I could do, three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> GameStop. Pawn, like, pawn shop is always like, oh, you brought in some really obscure thing. I got a guy that knows about this obscure thing. Let me yeah. bring him in here and see what he knows. And he's like, oh, best thing you're gonna get, maybe five dollars. <laughs> and it's like the guy's like, oh, uh, okay, fine, five dollars, <laughs> and then they resell it for fifteen hundred. Yeah. It's like, come on, bro. They gotta make a profit. Come on. Oh my god. I hate, I hate pawn shop. Yeah. <laughs> Chum Lee, man. Chum Lee rules the world. I have a shirt that says that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about Portrait of a Lady on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> All that to be said. I mean, you never know. A portrait of a Lady on Fire might might become an expensive piece of art. It is surely is a piece of art, man. It for sure is a piece of art with the way it, it looks, the, the paintings, all that stuff. Exactly. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so you told us about this movie, um, or at least... You did. You picked it for the pod so that way we could all watch it. I know sure. this was like the second or third time you've watched it. It was the second time. Yeah, I had a, such a fascination fascination with the trailer. Mm. I was so intrigued by what it, what it could mean. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Seeing that woman stand there with her dress on fire and just remembering how incredibly beautiful it was. And this was one of the movies where I was continually asking for it for my birthday from my parents. Yeah. And the strangest thing is my dad bought it for me. <laughs> and if you know anything about my dad, he's it, it's like way out of left field for him to buy this for me. Yeah. But he did, and I'm really glad for it because it it's incredibly beautiful. I sat there and watched it, and I loved it. Nice. First time I'd watched it from Criterion. That's awesome. And, man, I, and f to find out it's on Hulu as well, Yeah. I was like, dude, this is perfect. There you go. Why not choose it? That's awesome. Yeah, it's my first time watching it, and I think I said on the ending of the last episode that I had also seen the trailer, I think, when I watched The Lighthouse, mm. and I immediately was like, what is this going to be about? This movie, it's, it's, the trailer almost tells you nothing. Like, yeah. it just shows you, like, brief moments, and you don't really get any, like, dialogue or anything, and I was like, that seems like a kind of interesting premise and i was like and it looks beautiful mm -hmm. like i love the shots of the green and orange and blue ocean and all this stuff but i i had always i wanted to see it in theater and there was nowhere around the central valley that was showing a foreign Sadly. film 
Yeah. Unfortunately, until like Parasite swept up Oscar noms and then they re-released it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is luckily the first time that I got to watch it, and I do have to say it is something I want to rewatch immediately because I feel like there's so much I missed, and we'll we'll get that down into it a little bit whenever we get into the categories. But mm. yeah. What about you, Abe? You said it was your first as well. Yeah, it was my first, and I knew nothing about it besides this movie made you cry. Yeah, I I should I kind of I should have built that up a little bit differently because when you hear like a movie make someone cry, it's like okay, it's yeah, the, it's the I, traditional things that make people cry. Mm-hmm. But like, it was a little bit more niche to me. Mm. But I mean, I still enjoyed it, and like like Isaiah says, this is a movie that I want to rewatch now, watching it because I think I missed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I know that this that one of the things I have to say that I really appreciate off the bat with this movie is the nuance that it introduces to your typical love story, mm. right? Like with the typical love story, you have a person who is like, you know, the head of the couple. You said, like, let me woo yeah, and this he's, person. And like, I'm going to swoon this person, sweep them off their feet or something. Yeah. It was you know, whereas with this one, it's like they're both battling, you know, for – or well, I shouldn't say they're both battling for the head. They both have an equal understanding yeah. of each other, and they recognize that, like, hey, we both don't have to like fight for this head position. There is no head position. It's just us. Yeah, it looked like they were like trying to both understand yeah. the situation that they were in. Yeah, because there are scenes where she would introduce some flirtation, and then she would be a little hesitant, but also introduce them to, and it was kind of like this weird, like, well, should I? Yeah, give and should take. I? It's this ebb and flow the yeah. whole time. And it it was really beautiful to see them discover this relationship yeah. throughout the scenes. Yeah. And that also introduces like tons of tension yes. and like moments where I'm like just, just do something, man. Yeah. Like come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll get into it. Let's talk about it. So um who directed and wrote this movie? Yes, yeah, so I have the director, it's Celine Siyama. Okay. Is, did she also write that? Am I correct? Yeah, I believe she did. Yes. Okay. She's the director and writer and I'll give a brief synopsis before we start and a uh, spoiler warning. This film is in the 18th century. I think it's Brittany is the island or the, the part of the world we're at. Is that what it's called? I just know it's f- somewhere in I France. I know it's somewhere I'm in France. I don't know sure. how to really say it, though. Okay. Somewhere yeah, in the France. the island of Brittany. Island of Brittany. Incredibly beautiful place. We are following two characters by the names of Eloise and Marianne. Marianne is a painter, and she is has been tasked with painting a portrait of Eloise for her future husband. Mm. She has a uh, a husband waiting on her, doesn't know what she looks like. That's what the pa- the portrait is for, but she is completely against uh this this marriage. This marriage pretty much. Uh, so it's Marianne's job to you know in secret you know discover her and paint her in secret because she is uh Eloise is notorious for not posing for anybody Mm -hmm. she's notoriously really difficult to paint because she obviously doesn't want anyone to see her yeah she doesn't want to be married so she's going to make it as difficult as possible um so we get to see marianne as she goes on walks with her and uh just discovers this this beautiful woman underneath all her all her uh facade that she's putting up yeah uh and it's just it's really beautiful and it's it's truly pretty much all about what it is right yeah i think so i think that yeah that sums it up really well yeah so go check it out if you haven't it's streaming on hulu currently um i think depending on the like plan with hulu that you have so like if you have a certain plan there's ads i know like alexis parents have a certain plan where there's no ads yeah so i luckily got to watch it with no ads i watched it with ads. but there's other plans with hulu i it's hulu so strange like with their like plan system you watched it with that three or four on Lisa's TV, I uh, did. Let's see. I thought you own it. I do. Um, with the whole flight situation, I didn't really have much time to to put a DVD, and I had to stream it. Yeah. But All right. Um, I just rented it. Okay. Because yeah. I don't have Hulu. I just rented it off Apple TV. Okay. Yeah. That's probably what I should have done. In the grand scheme of things, because okay. <laughs> I would be sitting there, and this movie has a really long takes and it's very drawn out, pun intended. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> all of a sudden, you get a little bit of chick fry. <laughs> Go be your own. And I'm just like, all the tension's gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the tension's gone. Yeah. Uh, so the ads messed it up. But it is on Hulu. So okay. go and watch it there before we get into it. Yes, for sure. All right. Um, so, yeah, spoiler warning. As always, 
check it out beforehand before we get into this. If you don't care about spoilers, continue listening. But um, first off, you want to go ahead and start us off with your first favorite scene, Nick? I will. Yeah. So it's a little bit after the introduction. Uh, we get the whole thing of her getting to the island, her painting falling in the water and having to dry it off. But my first favorite scene is when they, the first time she sees her. Okay. And it's when they go on the ha- first walk. Yeah, their first walk. So she, she has the task of, of drawing her. Or painting her, but she doesn't. Nobody knows like what she looks like, and you know she goes down. She's like under the guise of she's her like her companion, her companion, like walking companion or something that's like hired to so go like along these walks with her and just talk. And yeah, I thought it was just like to keep eyes on her because yeah. of what the situation was before with, with the sister. sister, with the sister. Yeah, so that's that's what she was, and the first time we see Eloise is she's like in this cape like hooded figure she's got like a long cape covering her all her body she kind of just looks like a ominous figure yeah she looks like she's in that movie the village <laughs> so, <laughs> bro that's a good that's a good <laughs> yeah and i i don't know i just loved it because it seemed like eloise was this mystical figure that yeah. was just completely impossible to understand and impossible to even like v- to see you know yeah. what i mean and it was beautiful to see like the camera follows behind her and all you see is her hood go out to this beautiful vista. Yeah. And she starts running. Yeah, and her hood starts to fall. What's and that's when you see that she's blonde. Yeah. Blonde hair. And you're like, oh, okay, okay. I want to see her face now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it lingers. It does because yeah. she keeps going. She keeps going. And all of a sudden she turns to, to Marianne and she goes, I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. And Marianne goes, of dying. Yeah. And she goes, no, of running. And I don't know, I just thought it was really powerful because, you know, I di- it's not the introduction, but it's a quite a ways in. It's about like, I want to say 15, like 20 minutes, yeah, in. 20 minutes into the movie. Yeah. They had just built Eloise up as being this like very mystical. Yeah. Like nobody sees her. Nobody. Yeah. Incomprehensible being. Yeah. And She's like, a, like an endangered animal, right? Yeah. Like it's something that like is very, very rare to like see or something. Mm-hmm. And then to see it just. C- completely shed yeah. all that as she's running, and it. I think it's cool that Marianne g- is the one who gets to see her like straight on. Yeah, because I'm like, this is this is meant to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it yeah. does blow my mind that a little bit before she goes on that walk, that uh, she guesses her hair color. She's blonde. She's blonde. Yeah, because she brings out the dress, and it's this like emerald green dress, like super bright and beautiful. Like the, the c- that color green is. Like, I love that color mm-hmm. green. Yeah. And just by that, l- just by the look of the dress, she goes, she blonde. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sophie, right? Mm-hmm. Is that her real name? That's and her that's name in the, the character's name. That's yeah, the, character. So that's the character in the movie. She goes, yes. And I was just like, holy cow. How do you, like, only like a painter would know that what color matches her yeah, skin. Yeah, would compliment. Exactly. So and I was like, dang, I can't believe she guessed it. And then when we finally see it, it's just like, oh, crap. She's like, yeah. Yeah, and it, they also set it up, too, because, you know, she meets with a mom who's telling her all these things. And she says, hey, she ran out the last painter we had. He could not do it, and he just left. He gave up. And we get to see the, the portrait that he made, and it's everything is beautiful. We get to see the green dress and all that. But when you see the... It's, like, up to her neck. Yeah. Her face is not touched. Not touched at all, not painted. It's a blank canvas. And that set set the whole idea up of her being like, Dude, what the heck does she look like? Yeah, mm. is she gonna be or like what does she do to to the painter to make him like quit? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it, it set up all these questions that they answer later on. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I know that my first scene I don't think is a little. I think is a little bit ways into the movie. I think it might um, be both of our first scenes. Yeah, I, What's your that's next one? my next one as well. The, the yeah. harpsichord. Yes, okay. the harpsichord. So that's mine. Um, there is a moment in the film where. Um, I believe Marianne walks over and I think it's at this point she hasn't um, revealed yet that she is painting mm-hmm. her. Um, they're just kind of in this little like studio space that she's using and they're kind of looking around at stuff and you know there's it's it's something that's like a, a move in progress right there's like tarps all over stuff and she pulls a tarp off of one of these things and it ends up being a harpsichord and she's like oh I love these things and, you know, plays a couple of notes. And then Eloise walks by and says, like, oh, can you play that thing? And she's like, oh, yeah, I, a little bit, right? And 
So they, she sits down <laughs> and she's like, I, I know I love this one song where, you know, kind of goes like this and she plays a little bit and then starts going <laughs> and starts going in. It like gets going like in. she's like a virtuoso on mm. this thing and just starts, you know, going in on this thing and really gets lost in the music. And Eloise, as she's doing that, you know, takes time to sit by her on the bench and is just, ex- they're just she's just exchanging these glances they're, I mean, not even exchanging, right? Because Marianne is so enthralled with what she's playing. Um, Eloise is just looking at her. Yeah. And and there, there are these looks that, like, people long for on social media, right? Where, like, you know, you have, like, a, a video of somebody that looks at someone a certain way, and they're like, oh, that look. Like, I long for something like that. That's the type of thing that's going on here where, like, she is kind of, like, looking at her and smiling and thinking, who who is this woman? Like yeah. I, I, who are you? I want to get to know you more. I, 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 I'm loving this about you and, and what this thing that you can do. And you can really tell in her face because I believe this is even the first time that like Eloise's character smiles. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, I really enjoy that it's at this moment, like her character starts to kind of break down and she really starts to show her true colors and feelings for this person. But Marianne is not paying attention to it. So the whole time I'm like, Look at her. Come <laughs> on. Like, <laughs> stop playing and look at how she's looking at you. She likes you. Yeah. And, yeah, it was a really great scene. Yeah. It was beautiful to hear, like, also describing how the song. Dude, this, the song that she was playing is pretty good. It's beautiful. Like, it starts off slow, and she describes, like, the, their language is so eloquent, dude. It's They're speaking in French, and it just sounds incredible. And they're talk, she's talking like, oh, this, this uh you know, you play this and the storm is coming and then there's lightning and then, you know, the the wind is blowing through the, the house and all that stuff. And she's playing the, the crazy mel- melody to go along with this story that I guess it's about. Yeah. I thought was beautiful. Yeah. I also really like whenever it starts to get towards the end of this scene, you know, she kind of stops playing and Marianne not really understanding the situation or how Eloise is feeling yet brings up milan Mm. and i love this immediate like snap snap back to reality (laughs) 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 but she like uh eloise really does like you could see snap back she immediately goes like oh yeah on her face oh yeah i have Mm. to go oh yeah i'm getting married Uh, it it was like kind of like oh man like she was in this moment you know and and i the other thing i really like about this scene as well is i feel like i'm watching somebody like interact with their like they're having this intimate moment and i shouldn't be watching it but i'm like peeking through the blinds You're like, <laughs> and i'm like spying on them <laughs> she's more so like, dude. like i'm sitting there watching them i'm like oh look at, they're gonna are they gonna kiss they're so cute look at this yes. like and i'm sitting there just watching them like oh this is so cute i love this yeah but um yeah i i really enjoyed this scene and i have to say like it's just a, a testament to the great acting that's in this movie as well as the writing so mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What do you got over there, Sorry. Mike? Mike, man. Uh, so that was one my first favorite scene. But my second scene is probably, I want to say, like 10, 15 minutes after that. And it's when the mom is saying, it's they're revealing the first picture, the first portrait. Oh, okay. gosh. And it looks what nothing to like it? her. It doesn't. It, doesn't. it truly it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, like when her. I saw it, I was like, that doesn't I mean, look it, like her at all. It no. looks good. It, yeah, it looks, looks amazing, great, but, but it doesn't, doesn't look, look like, like her. Yeah. I love the way that they des- decide to set it up, but go, so, go. So th- she s- she decides to show it to Eloise first because she thinks she does deserve to see it. And she's like, I don't like it. Like, it doesn't look like me, this and this and that. There's no and life. There isn't. And then No presence. And then she goes and gets the mom, and the mom, before the mom comes, she messes it up. Yes. And she the face. messes up the face, and she goes, I didn't like it. Like, there was, it's just not good enough. Is what I believe is what she said, and Just like the, the mom straight up, the mom straight up says, "What's well, like you're not, um, inc- not capable of doing this." She goes, "No, I am. I just need more time." And then she goes, "Well, you're, we're going to Milan. Like you're going home." And then that's my favorite part is when Eloise goes, "Well, I'll, po- I'll pose for her." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And finally, I from the move from the movie we know that she's never posed for anybody. She's always moving or she just doesn't want to stay still yeah for because she doesn't want to get married she doesn't want that i hate to say it but like a burden on her 
Okay. Is that bad to say? I would say just more the more or less that she's like stubborn and doesn't want to comply because she's so opposed to the marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she says that, and then the mom's like, "What? Like, why now? Why do you want to pose for her now? Like, what's so different about her than everybody, anybody, any other painter that's came to paint you? Like, and uh, you finally get to see like this character arc of her. She's like." And she's changing. She's changing to a different person, honestly, mm. in my opinion. And I loved it because, again, we get told that she's, I, I, I guess you'd say stubborn. She doesn't want to be seen, always covers her face. like. And finally, she's like, I'll do it. And I and I loved it because you've seen this new side of Elise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like that it she, you know, her like you said, her character is slowly, you know, making this arc and, you know, this facade of, like this hardened woman is getting, you know, chipped at. Mm-hmm. And um, I I really enjoy that she says she'll do that because I think in Eloise's mind, she is like, if I can just have five more days with this woman, mm-hmm. like that will, that Solidify. that's, that's, that's all I need. You know, like I don't want to go on this trip to Milan. I just want to, I want to spend time with her. And you know, if, if posing for her to do this portrait will get me that time, then I'll do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care. And you, regardless of the situation, like she knows that if this portrait gets painted, it's going to get sent off to her future, you know, husband and there's, it, they're going to get married. Like there's yeah. nothing to stop that. But she thinks that, you know, just, a little just bit that, longer. just that time with her is worth it. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's really beautiful. That's what leads me to the idea that Marianne destroys the painting. I think one, because it doesn't truly resemble uh, Eloise at all mm-hmm. because she's been following the I like how they, they set it up too because she's like what do, you, what do you mean this is you this is how everyone sees you I follow the conventional rules with lighting shadow all that and she goes yeah but it's not present it's not here it's 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 so far away from you like you don't even feel it yeah and she has to describe like like if you want to be in this relationship you kind of have to like break some rules yeah. you know what I mean and they're, they're setting up that idea and I, that's what leads me to believe that she decides to do it not only because it's not really great, but she wants more time as well. Yeah. She's opening to, up to the idea of the romance. Yeah. And also like, like you said, like truly get to know her. Mm-hmm. Like I think at this, at this moment, they've only spent the five days together, right? Yeah. Five or six days. And they only have five more after this. So it's really all or nothing. You got to jump in mm-hmm. in order for this to really work. So, yeah. And it was cool because Lisa, we were watching in there and she goes, you know, it's really cool because the portraits, are just like our snapshots of the the relationship progress because at first it sucks and then it, you get to see her and she's like man you're always like angry i can't catch that smile yeah and then at the very end you can see that nuanced little like little smirk yeah and it's like the f- it's it's the knowledge yeah through intimacy that that she builds throughout the whole movie yeah which i think is is beautiful to think about yeah most definitely yeah you got a next favorite scene I do, yeah. Uh, my next one is a little bit after yours when she decides to paint. You know, she uh, it's a, it, actually it, it, poses her. And she poses her and does all that stuff. But it's a, it's a, I think a scene right after a couple of times they've done it and she's painting, and it's the part where Marianne starts to be like, mm, like I know so much about you. You do this with your hands. Yes, yeah. yes. This is my next favorite scene. Same here. You do this with your hand when you're upset, and you. You know, furrow your brows when you're, uh, or you you bite you your lip when your you're. Lips. Yeah, you chew on your lips when you're embarrassed and all that She's stuff. All starts yeah. doing it immediately. <laughs> yeah, and it was cute to see them both like, well, to see Marianne notice these things about her, yeah. right, and to see these little nuances, and that's that's only really you you see when you care about someone deeply. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are the things that the smallest minute details make the world a difference. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And she, she's noticing them, and she's displaying that. And she goes, you know, I notice all these things about you. It kind of sucks to be in your position because you're just being watched all the time. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then and she calls her over. Yeah, Eloise says, come over here. And she goes, come. She goes, they get super close, and yeah. she goes, look over there. And she goes, oh, the one, it's one of my favorite quotes. She goes, if you look at me, who do I look at? Yeah. And it's just describing there's that not only is. Uh, you're not the only one doing the look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, even before that, she starts to say like, "Oh, well, you you breathe with your mouth when you're at losing control, and yeah. you do all this stuff." And they're noticing yeah. these small little things about each other. Yeah, it's it's not just one person being, 
sort of like obsessed with the other. It's it's a two way street, and it is. they're they're just they're on they're on the same path, mm-hmm. and 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 it's really cool to see because we don't see a lot of romance stories like that. It's usually always one person that is like, "Oh, I love you, I want you," you know, and the other person is like, "Oh, it feels good to be wanted and feel be, feels good to be loved." But these two people want each other the same, and mm-hmm. they they make it equally known that they that they do and I, that's something i really liked about this scene yeah was l- like she flips the script on her and she does and makes her so embarrassed and i i really like the camera work in this aspect too because um whenever marianne is describing all the things that eloise does it, it we were at least the way that the camera work is is shot in this scene you know it's a wider angle whenever we look at marianne and then it's a sort of like a portrait style um, angle whenever we are on um, Eloise. Mm-hmm. So it's like we are watching, you know, a painting, right? We're watching something happen, and the painter is the one that has the control of the room, yeah. right? And, you know, she's telling her all this stuff, and she's like really, it feels like exerting that power over that. But then whenever they get close with one another, it switches the the power dynamic shifts. Yeah. And it's not until that moment that like now we have the wider angle of Eloise and now it's this tight claustrophobic shot of Marianne and she's kind of like, all right, I'm going to get back to painting, you know, it yeah. like goes back into it. So it was this really nice use of camera work and power dynamics that I really liked in this scene as well. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because I had paused it during this scene to write it down because I just I was like, oh, I freaking love this. I love the whole dynamic here. And it's literally, I mean, quite literally in the middle of the film. So up until this time, it's like them building and building, building, and we're in Marianne's position the whole time. And then it's that, that subtle shift where it's like, okay, the dynamic is shifting here to where it's now Eloise is saying like, hey, I'm, I'm noticing you. You're not the only one that's doing the looks over here. I'm, I'm in this too. Yeah. And it's, I think it's really you know interesting that it's right in the middle of the film that is and and that's where it continues on from there and how they even get closer after that yeah i like that yeah i i love it i i love that scene it's it's one of those things where it's like oh i remember that yeah or like i i know like i love to to when people notice that yeah about yourself and to see that happen there you're like it's so, it's so cute. It's so wholesome. <laughs> it's so it feels so real yeah. because this is like this is what when you notice when you care about someone and you notice the things about them, mm-hmm. it just is so genuine. Yeah. So I, I left it's it. The little things. It's the little things, man. Yes, most definitely. That was my last favorite scene. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have any more. I've got two more, but they're a little more towards the end of the film. So I don't know if you got some before that. I saved quite a bit for bra moments, but my next one is when. The mom is coming back. Okay. So do you have one? No. My next my next one after that is whenever she's at the gallery. Okay, yeah. So this one, I this is the scene I talk about whenever I say I cry. And it's it's kind of finely tuned towards me because I get really emotional whenever I see someone like be be full of passion. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's I, it immediately reminds me of uh the greatest showman. Yeah. And you the, I mean, it's a kind of a sad movie, but there's no reason to cry. But there's one specific scene where Hugh Jackman is like watching this beautiful performance and he's just getting teary eyed. And I sit in there and I'm like, do me too. Like, <laughs> like just to, to see someone be so passionate yeah. is something that really like tugs on my heartstrings. Yeah. And this is one of the scenes that really did that is, you know, they get into a little altercation where she's saying like, you know, we really shouldn't be doing this. Like it's, it's kind of like why are we doing this? It's just going to break our hearts because at the end of it, you're, you're going to, you're going to go off and get married. You're going to go off and get married. So might as well just stop now. Like, I don't want you to, but we have to, to save ourselves the, the despair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it, it sucks. Cause you see, you see their first little like fight together and they leave and you, you're like, oh, don't end it like this. Don't end it like this. And they go out. Marianne is doing her stuff and she goes to dinner and Sophie is giving them both dinner. There's three plates, but she doesn't give one for Eloise. And she goes, what the heck? Oh, no. I think, I think I'm think i confusing that with a different scene. I, I'm not sure. I think, I think you were right, right on the that, right track. Yeah, you're on the right track because right after that, after she, she, says, her, she says she just uh, doesn't feel yeah, well. Yeah, she doesn't feel well. Oh, yes. And then she goes, the mom is coming home soon. Yeah. 
Okay, and yes. And that's when it cooks her she into overdrive. Out. She's like, I need to I need to fix, fix this, this now. And she runs to the beach. Yeah, and she's like, I'm going to bathe. And, you know, goes into the ocean. And yeah. she's like, did you find out if you could swim? She's like, No, that's a different scene. That's a little earlier. Oh, is that? This is the one where she goes up and embraces and her, her from behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's saying, like, forgive me, forgive me. Okay, yeah, I remember And they're that. both, they're both, like, tearing, crying. crying together. And Eloise turns around because she says, your mom is coming home in a day. And that's when they both realize, like, we literally don't have time to argue. Like, all we need to do is love right now because yeah. that's all we have time for. We want to soak up as much as possible. Yeah. And I don't just to see the the passion between them two like cry and just embrace each other. I was like, <laughs> I, I it really got to me because man, it's such a sucky situation. Yeah, to see some people so genuinely in love but being slowly, slowly ripped apart. Yeah, it 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 really got to me. Yeah, I there was the my next favorite scene here was a moment that was truly heartbreaking for me. Um, but I can't say that I teared up or, or cried or anything, unfortunately. Sure. And I and that, that's one thing I'm wondering, like if I watch it on a rewatch, having, you know, experienced the film already, I wonder if that will change for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because this, this scene, man, it I immediately was just like, oh, <laughs> dude. Like, it was like, like somebody just took a steak and just put it in your heart and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. you're kidding me. It was, oh, it was rough. I had originally put it in a bro moment because I was like, you're joking. Uh, how is yeah. it not a bro moment? It is. It, it is ins- an insane bro moment for sure. Well, so set, give us some context as to. I, d- I will. So, okay. So, um, a little bit towards the end of the film, um, we get back, we get brought back into present time uh, because the entire time we've been watching this ca- this relationship blossom has been in the past. And um, a little bit towards the end of the relationship or what we are shown of the relationship, um, Eloise and Marianne had just, um, you know, I believe they they were with each other in this room and, you know, they're lying with one another and Marianne starts to sketch a portrait of, of Eloise to remember her by. Mm, Like a little locket. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like essentially like a little locket and she's coloring it and stuff and she's like, I want to remember you, like with this. And she, and then um, Eloise says, like, like I, well, I ain't got nothing yeah, over here. What about me? Like, I don't have anything to remember you by. Yeah. And so she's like, Well, you know, I can draw myself. And Marianne is like, Okay, well, where are you gonna draw yourself in? She hands her this book that she's been reading, and she's like, Draw yourself on this page, page twenty-eight. Mm-hmm. There's a big blank space, and she sets up this mirror on um on Eloise's body and kind of like is like staring at herself through the mirror as she's drawing and we eventually get to see the drawing that she had made in page 28 and it's you know a very it's it's you can kind of like compare it to uh Titanic and like the draw me like one of your french girls yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? cuz she says pose for me yeah and then the, the so one she poses now. yeah and then i'm assuming she just kind of like uses puts the her mirror yeah, puts her face on the face it, right yeah. But um, it's it's essentially like that, and on page twenty eight, and it's something that's very special to each person, right? That you know, Marianne has the portrait of Eloise, and Eloise now has this portrait or this you know this entire memory of Marianne in this book that she loves. Um, so with that context, we go into the present. We are at this gallery, and I love the whole commotion of the gallery and this mm-hmm. feeling of anxiousness, right? This mm-hmm. This anxiety, like bodyguard again. yeah, this anxiety-filled place where it's just you know packed shoulder to shoulder. There's tons of hustle and bustle, people talking, powdered wigs everywhere. Yeah, dude. Like, and there's just art like all over the walls. Beautiful art. And you know, I love the camera work behind, um, behind Marianne at this point because it's kind of following her and she's you know making her way through the crowd, mm-hmm. and she goes straight to one of the walls and sees a portrait and it happens to be of Eloise and she's looking at Eloise and the painter that painted that portrait almost captures the same exact expression of the portrait that she painted whenever Eloise got you know sent to Milan to get married Mm -hmm. and it slowly pans down and we see that there's a kid there now and my immediate thought was like oh man she has a kid like now she 
Marianne is discovering for the first time that like she is having a life outside of her. Mm -hmm. You think? Which is, I mean, that's what I assume that she, that's her kid. Yeah, it, yeah. W which is it, it, that's heartbreaking in and of itself. That it like is. you found out that somebody moved on. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? Like I knew the circumstances, but still it hurts. Yeah. But the thing that really uh, hurt me was that she posed with the book that she had drawn her her portrait in. And Edit. she has her finger in the spot, and you see page 28 in 28. the cover. Oh, was and like, that was the moment where I was like, oh, dude, <laughs> oh, man, like, I, oh, st stab me. Like, I, I want to die. It's so sad. Like, she I could never forgot. I couldn't imagine. She never and forgot. That's like, it's one of those things, you know, and. I'm sure everybody has a moment in their life where they're like, I'll never forget this or this moment or this person, um, you know, that's, you know, coupled with a thing, right? So, like, I have, you know, certain things, um, like certain, you know, knickknacks or something like that that were given to me by, like, my grandparents. And I'm like, oh, man, I remember when my granddad gave me this. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that moment. And when you see it, you're like, it's like a yeah, core memory. Exactly. Yeah. And for Elo for Marianne to be experiencing that all at the first time in a public setting, like and for her e b barely to even being able to control her emotions like as soon as she sees that book she starts tearing up and mm -hmm. you see it and it lingers on her for about like 30 seconds my eye i like i'm like oh dude i couldn't even imagine that like yeah. that sucks but it it was a, a a great scene it's a big bro moment for me yeah it completely heartbreaking situation man yeah it's <sighs> i don't even know how to describe it like it's so, it sucks to see that she, I mean, what they had thought would happen. Yeah. They, she had to go get married. She had kids and all that stuff. But she never did forget, like you were saying, A.B. That 28 will always be a part of her life. Yeah. And it leads to my ending that yeah. I love. Same here. I, yeah. I really enjoyed the ending here as well. She, it's the first time she had actually seen her, seen her, and they're at the opera. And they're playing the song that she played for on the harp, harpsichord earlier. And... You know, as they're going crazy, it sounds so beautiful, and the camera just slowly zooms onto Eloise. And Eloise, at first, she's she's listening to it, she's engaged with it, and then she starts to get all teary-eyed. Yeah, she she's starts breathing heavy. Mm -hmm. She's, like, <laughs> taking deep breaths, and you can tell, like, she's, she's, a, she's about to just let it loose. Yeah. yeah. But she's starting, she really does, like, she's crying and all that stuff, but then at the end, she's, like, smiling and, and enjoying herself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Remembering all those memories that she had with her together, and it, it uh, incredibly sad scene. Yeah, and it also was great acting. Yes, yeah. there's nothing being said; she is solely acting with her face. Yeah, the only words that are said in that scene was, "I saw her; she didn't see me." Mm -mm. And uh, and even that, I was just like, "Oh man!" To be like across the room from, from your some, love, from, from your your love, your first love, and for them to not see you. And for them to be experiencing this whole thing that, you know, they're thinking about you, they're thinking about all these memories, but you're not able to connect with one another is just <sighs> so hard. Yeah. It's and it, it is tragic. Like, it, the the definition of tragedy. Honestly, like, if that, I was in that situation, I would just want to yell yeah. that person's name. Like, look at me. I'm right here. Yeah. Like, like if I was looking at you, Nick, and I hadn't seen you in so long. Like, yeah, yo! And... You're just paying attention to someone. I would probably yell so much just to try to get your attention. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure she wanted to as well. But I'm sure, there's they, she can't. Yeah, I mean, her, she probably her, thinks about the consequences that she will on. have, and like. But there's always that hope, you know what I mean? That like, oh, I see you. Like I still love you, and I know you still love me because you wrote 28. Like we we still have that, but it'll never be. Yeah, which is the sucky part. Yeah, is that it'll never be. Yeah. I um I just one other thing about the ending. I just wrote that it's a very moving end to the film. And it's and it's this is like a, a point in the movie where this is the only music that's played mm -hmm. throughout the entire film. So when we hear this big rush of instrumentation, all this stuff, you're just like Whoa. Whoa like this is insane and then it as soon as it cuts to black, it's silent. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it leaves you to sit there for a moment and just be like, wow, that was, that was an insane ending. Or that was a very touching and, you know, very gripping ending to such an emotional movie. Mm -hmm. And 
it's a a really a great way to end a movie if i don't say so yeah or if i do say so if i was in that festival i would be yeah standing up and clapping right afterwards and innovation yeah Yeah. standing ovation all around because it was just a perfect way to end yeah all right is that it for favorite scenes i think so yeah that's it for me okay let's get into some best quotes I feel like there are some heavy hitters here. There are. Um, my first one, I believe you have it written down if you yeah, want to say it. This is the only one that I have, and I said, and it's saying, being free is being alone. And that's all that I wrote, just because when I watched this, sorry, I was just trying to think of when I watched it. Um, I don't nec- necessarily think it's true. Being free is being alone? Yeah. Well, the the... That, the that, quote is, the that quote is asked as a question. Yes, it is. So um, Marianne, I believe, gives Eloise the option to like go on her walk alone. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, you'll, you'll get freedom or something like that by, by being alone and being in solitude. And then Eloise says being, being free, being freedom, is being free is being alone. Like, is that is that what is that what freedom that means? Freedom to you? is. Yeah. yeah, she says, in solitude, I felt the liberty you spoke of, but I also felt your absence. Yeah, <sighs> and that's one of my other favorite quotes. Whenever she goes on that walk and comes back, and she's like, I found the liberty that you were speaking of whenever I was alone, but I missed you. Yeah, and I was just <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> she is so cute. She's that's like, how you know, that's how you know that she's like, I'm, I'm in love. Yeah. yeah. That, oh. It's like she's like casted the real out. She's like, look. Look, I, I I'm interested. Yeah, I'm really interested. Are you gonna bite? Are you gonna bite? Yeah. You know, it's that State Farm commercial. The oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, I have one that we haven't talked about yet, and it's uh, when Eloise is saying, she's basically saying, "Hey, this painting's crap. <laughs> like this painting sucks, pretty much." She's like, "Is this really how you see me yeah. and all that?" And uh, after all that, Marianne goes, "I didn't know you were an art critic," and Eloise goes. I didn't know you were a painter. Yeah, dude. I when I heard that, I was all. Ooh. She said, "Shots fired." Yeah, yeah dude. She, she freaking. She was not pulling punches. No, she clapped back quickly. Yeah, I I loved that. I have a little bit more of the quote beforehand, um, and I really like when Eloise says that um, she asks the she asks Marianne like, "There's no presence. There's no life in this painting," and Marianne says, "Your presence is made up of fleeting moments that may lack truth." Mm. And Eloise says, "Not everything is fleeting. Some feelings are deep." The f- and you know, you the f- know the fact that it isn't cl- the fact it isn't close to me that I can understand, but I find it sad that it isn't close to you. Mm. And I was just like, "Ooh, man!" And you can tell like she's upset about the painting, and that's what leads Marianne to get defensive. And she's like, "I, I didn't know, know you were close didn't, to me. I didn't know you were an art critic." She's yeah, like, I didn't know you were a painter. Oh, I, I like, loved it. Oh, dang. Clap back. Yeah, seriously. That's it for the best quotes for me. I have only one last one, and it was with the mom. Uh, gosh, that mom pretty much went through a terrible, terrible thing with losing her, one of her daughters. Yeah, seriously. Uh, but it was, you know, she was, Marianne was talking to her sitting down, and she goes, she says something about, oh, I, I would like you to paint something for my friend. The only thing is, she's really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> she's really freaking ugly. Like, you're going to have a hard time painting her. <laughs> and they're all laughing. She goes, Oh, you've made me laugh. It's ages since that happened. And Marianne goes, I didn't do anything. And she goes, you're here. It takes two to be funny. Yeah. Uh, and I just felt that like little spark yeah. come back in the mom. Yeah. Like, this is a nice, like a nice lady. Yeah. She's just trying to do her best, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I like that. That's it for the best quotes. Let's get into some bro moments. My first one, if we want to kind of hit off on, you know, that, that issue that the mom was going through, was finding out that Eloise's sister jumped off the cliffs cliff. to avoid being married yeah. to the guy yeah. and then finding out that Eloise she has to take her place. Yeah. She apologized right before she did it. Yeah. She said, I'm She's sorry. Like, I, I'm sorry about for what I'm about to do to you, Eloise. But for giving you my fate. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be, that's gonna be hard. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Seriously. I can imagine. Imagine me. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I was about to say like a fake s- scenario. Uh, my next one is a little like, there's this character named Sophie there. Yeah, she's like a maid. She's like a maid yeah. and like, she's pretty, to me, I think, she, I want to say she's young. Oh, yeah. She seems to be young. Yeah. But we find out she's pregnant mm. and and she's trying to not have this baby. Mm. 
Um, and immediately, because, I, well, how, what do you do in that situation in that time period, like to not have a baby? Like, yeah, it was interesting to see them 18th like go in France. Yeah. yeah, to see them go and get like special herbs and drink yeah. special drinks. Yeah, and like run on the beach back and forth. I was like. <laughs> It and just pushing her <laughs> in a in a movie that feels so like elegant. Yeah. This felt very like barbaric. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink so, these herbs. You yeah. know, it, it felt weird. So yeah. she goes to I want to say to this like witch doctor or something. Yeah, almost, almost. And they give her these things, and she they do like, the brujeria back. on her. They, they do the brujeria <laughs> on her, <laughs> <laughs> and they they're like, well, come back. The, that lady says, come back in two days. Like it, it nothing happened yet, mm. and we just see her stand in there. But there's like, and I get the under the person that she just offed herself. Like, Had yeah, she's straight up her feet are dangling. Either she's levitating, or <laughs> that the herbs that she gave her gave Are her powers, her <laughs> and she really did the brujeria. And now she's like she, floating. She's becoming the witch. Yeah, like, yeah the ending of the witch. <laughs> where they're just yeah, yeah. Floating she's up. floating, or yeah. she unalived herself like my man Brooks over here. Yeah, yeah. rest in, in peace. peace, bro. Um, and I was like. She's just doing this herself because she doesn't want the baby, and I was just like, "What? No freaking way!" Well, and the other and thing then, too is like she's doing it in front of, in front of, in front of, Mary, of Mary and Louise. Yeah, and I'm like, they're just okay with it. Like, they're like, "Oh yeah, you don't want it? All right, kill yourself, bro." Like, like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> and they're just like, "All right, we're in 18th century. There's not much else we could do." Yeah. It was just insane. So then, so then, obviously, we see Marianne finally get these like. What re- you called it refried beans? No, yeah, I called it. <laughs> they're, they're did. Like, they're, I didn't know what else it was. It, was like it a, looked it's like, like a bunch of herbs and spices. It just looked know. like a bean paste. And man. then finally, you see her just come back and just like she's obviously hanging on something, like holding holding on to something. Oh, and say. they make her eat the thing. And they make her eat the thing. Yeah. yeah. And so she comes back, and you finally like, I was like, oh my gosh, like my heart finally went back up, and I was like, she didn't do that. Yeah. Like, yes, finally. Mm-hmm. Like. Okay, I'm okay with that. But then I was just like, but now what are they feeding her? Yeah, they eat her. They she eats this stuff. They eat. They eat her. Yeah, they eat her. <laughs> <laughs> this, this turns into like, uh, the hills have eyes. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, after she eats that stuff, she goes she back up and starts doing the thing. And I'm like, what is she doing up there, dude? I don't she, know. She doing pull ups. She just holds she them. So you imagine much she's wine? just like ripped under all those gowns. She's just she like, even, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that definitely was weird. Now, I want to go back to the whole, like, witch doctor chant circle that they went to. Dude, through. I like that. Yeah. This is I'm crazy. Like singing this folk song. I freaking loved it, I dude. sent it to you guys. Yeah. It's crazy. They go to this, like, my guess is that like they're going. It's like a bonfire, like, social gathering type thing. No, it's just like, this is like some witchcraft stuff. I gotta. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They seem like they they know their way. Like, oh, we know that you're pregnant. And this is, you know, like, they know. They f- I feel like they're all, like like handmaiden or like they're you know they know mm. so that's why they're there she's saying like hey i haven't did what do i do it's nothing's working what do i do she, and that's why she truly knows that she's pregnant and they they all start just going oh and it it sounds so sick yeah. though yeah i i liked this scene but when it was happening i was like what is what's happening? going on <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's <laughs> yeah they start doing all these rhythmic things and they start i in Latin. I'm totally forgetting how it goes, but it is in Latin. And I think one of the facts uh, that we had, or at least one, probably one of us that had, had written down, was that the Latin means, like, I'm trapped or... I cannot I, escape. Yeah, I cannot escape. And these women are just going... Da, 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 yeah. da. And it sounds cool. It sounds it very, sounds like, really cool. tribal. It does. It sounds... It, you know what it reminds oh, me of? It, it almost reminds me of, like, the Northmen. It does! Where, yeah, where it where does. Just like... Brancing around on the fire and just going, ah, ah, just like screaming and letting things loose and all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's also a really beautiful scene with um, Eloise and uh, Marianne exchanging these smiles and laughs with one another with this fire in between them. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. Yeah. But it's even a, a bigger moment whenever Eloise catches on fire. <laughs> it literally catches on fire. Portrait of a lady on fire. Yeah catches on fire and everybody rushes over there to put it out <laughs> yeah and then uh i love that that shot of like that cut where th- she grabs her and goes to pull her up 
and then it cuts to that same and she's and, uh, on that the, same on body the part, and they're on the rocks, climbing the rocks together. Yeah, and they're going to that little secluded area yeah, to go to share a moment, give a little smooch. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, most definitely. Um, my only other bro moment I had written down was just one that caught me off guard, and it was whenever it was before we find out that Sophia is pregnant, or Sophie is pregnant, and um, it's at this moment like we're I think we're watching Marianne. She's like sleeping or something. She wakes up. And she has, like, a nightgown on, and she, you know, she kind of wakes up, but she hasn't opened her eyes yet, and she kind of, like, touches herself a little bit. And when she's touching her, when she's touching herself down there, I was like, oh, what's happening here? Is she, like, turned on or something? I don't know exactly what's going on. Yeah, I was like, what are they trying to show here? Yeah, and I immediately was like, oh, her bush is just out. Like, (laughs) like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, like there, I was like, oh, oh okay, yeah. yeah I mean, they, em- right. they yeah, embraced it's, it. Yeah, it's 18th century France. I mean, obviously, nobody's shaven or anything like that. Well, they don't know anything yeah. of that. Didn't exactly. Think- I mean, they did the same thing with like, armpit hair. Yeah. And, yes. Um, yeah. But it was just, it was caught me off guard. I was like, what? I So okay. I, yeah. I expected it, <laughs> but when I saw it, I didn't expect it. Yeah. <laughs> because me and Lisa were talking about it. We were, I forget where we were going. Cause she, I was like, oh, I gotta watch the movie too. And she was like, just be aware, you're gonna see this. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, like, it's part of the movie. Yeah. Like, and then when I watched it, I was like, oh shoot, there, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Imagine watching that on the freaking plane. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I in wish front of two old, old, old lady. Yeah, I'd be like, I'll skip, skip, skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I don't know. There's, there's part of me where I'm like, oh wow, like it's kind of. Like, why did they show that? But then there's another part of me where I'm like, why am I so taken back by it? It's natural. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hair. Yeah. It's body hair. Well, like, it's just, everybody has it. Just has it just catches it, you, know? you off guard because you just didn't expect and it. They yeah. don't, normally, they don't show that in the movies. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe always, that's why. Like, you, every time you see nudity, it's mainly the breasts. Yeah. Like, you don't really see much of maybe some buttocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's never <laughs> like, some like the real intimate areas. Yeah. And when you get into those intimate areas, you're like, whoa, this is a little different. Yeah. But this film kind of embraces it. Yeah. And one of the things that I really liked where they took it, because I, I immediately thought I was like, oh, she's just like, you know, she's thinking about Eloise or something. Yeah. She had like dream. Yeah. yeah. And so, That's what I thought. And so, you know, she starts touching and then she looks and then goes to the kitchen to meet with Sophie and she's kind of like hunched over and stuff. And I'm like, oh, is she having her period? Yeah. yeah. She's having her monthly, you know, monthly thing. And that's when we come to find out that Sophie... Hasn't had it in three months. I know. And she's like, I've missed my monthlies by three months. I was like, oh, she's pregnant. Yeah, you're pregnant. Yeah. That's crazy. At that moment, I was just like, by who? There's no men. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. It'd be an interesting answer there. Yeah. Speaking of body hair, though, the... uh, My next bro moment is when they use the... They put the... (laughs) That that mushroom... Herbs. That drug. drug. Yeah, the drug. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) They do some hallucinogenics. And they, they start flying together. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's insane. I love the way that they show her eyes. And they're, they're, just, just, all, they're black. just black. All pupil. Yeah. Like, just high. No, as soon as I saw them put that stuff on there, I was like, oh, are they about to, like, do drugs and fool around? Yeah. And then they, you know, they show them, I think they're kissing. And then they pull back and you see her eyes. And I was like, oh, she's high. <laughs> yeah. I was like, she's even, high. Even um, Mary Ann, she goes, her eyes. Yeah. And... But she almost looks like she's getting possessed. That's how that's how dilated her eyes are. Yeah, it was it was funny. Yeah, most definitely. My next one is uh, seeing Eloise in her dress, in her wedding dress. Yeah, Marianne continuing to see her. Yeah, and I think that that's that's a that's also a, ties into a couple other things that I had about the bro moments because we almost see the there are some points in the movie where you see like this almost like apparition. Mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. version of Eloise wearing this all white dress and she's like she's lit up and like in a long hallway and the first time I saw it I got scared <laughs> because like because this movie you know really draws itself out and is very slow and takes its time with a lot of its shots and the amount of time that she stared there like she stared down that hallway and looked at this like ghostly type figure my mind was immediately like she's going to charge her like, oh, like, like she's like the conjuring. Yeah, like she's gonna, just, yeah, just be like, <laughs> and just float over. Hear, and I my me, if I would have been like, get out of there, run! Oh hell no! I, I got so scared. 
at first because I was like, if I saw that, oh, I'm, I'm out. I'm running. So, yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> F this crap, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. uh, but as soon as I saw that, I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. And then it, you, we see it a couple more times, I think, before we actually see the context behind why we are seeing Eloise in this dress. And it's to, when we find out that it is her wedding dress. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My next moment is actually seeing Sophie getting the procedure done. Oh, okay. And and then them painting her. Yeah, painting, painting the situation to remember the it situ- by. Which is, why would you want to remember that situation? I don't know. I And that's one, that's kind of where the themes of like emancipation I think yeah. come in because at 18th century France at the time like everything that is happening in this movie would be considered taboo like yeah. it's it's we don't know if it's necessarily illegal at the time but it's you know it's these themes of you know women taking back control and yeah. taking back um you know um being emancipated and not being controlled by by men essentially yeah. yeah and i think that that's why they paint it and why they want to you know remember the moment as like them being kind of like f the system you mm-hmm. know maybe i'm not sure yeah it was kind of interesting too how they framed it because when she's getting the procedure done you know she's having this baby kind of like crawl on her and like yeah i know and that right was next to her. And i was, was like because she was like holding the baby's hand and i was just and like, tearing it I, I don't know if it was supposed to be like harrowing like a this is what you're missing. Or I th- if it I was thought that's what it was. I was like, that that's the life that she could have with that baby. Mm. I don't know. I f- for some reason, I felt like they wanted to say like it was more of a positive thing. But I don't know, I don't know how that I would fit know. into the narrative very much. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, thought it, I thought it was unique that they, like, as this, as this procedure is happening, she has like a nice, healthy baby right next to her. And I was like, yeah. a cute one too. Yeah, there, it, it seemed to be some kind of connection there. And I was like, I wonder why they decided to do it like this. It's very strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting, though. Yeah. I had uh, one more thing about Eloise and her wedding gown. Yes. Um, with with the whole parallels between Orpheus, the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Eurydice. Oh, Eurydice. Um, and so there's a, whole, there's a whole scene where Sophie and Eloise... And Marianne are sitting down with one another and they're reading the story of Orpheus, which is a Greek uh, mythology tale. And I think that the basic gist of the tale is that Eurydice, Eurydice, or Eurydice? I've, Eurydice. 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 Eurydice, I think. Eurydice, what did you say? <laughs> Eurydice. <laughs> that, that meme? Um, <laughs> so, oh, oh the Eridio Cyclitis. Is oh, that what you're yeah. about? That, that, <laughs> Dude, that's old. <laughs> <laughs> that's what came to my head right now. I'm sorry. I don't know how it goes. No, Eridio yeah. Cyclitis. Just looks at the camera. And he goes and spells it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Eurydice. Eurydi- yeah, it's Eurydice. Eurydice and the story that we're talking about here. Um, essentially, I think the 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 spark notes on the whole thing is that Eurydice has a love named Orpheus who was taken from him. And Orpheus, I believe, is living in the underworld under the rule of Hades. And Eurydice comes to strike a deal with Hades that he, you know, Orpheus will come back to life, but she can only live in like a certain area of the world. And if she is ever to leave it, or if Eurydice is ever to like turn back and look at her a specific at a specific time or something like that, like before they get out of a uh, of a uh, something. Yeah, that essentially Orpheus will die again, but she'll never be able to come back. Yeah, and it's like kind of like that, like the second death, right? And um, you know, they sit there and talk about this, and they talk about you know why does it, eventually at the end of this story, Eurydice ends up turning around to look at Orpheus and mm-hmm. she ends up vanishing and is never to be found again. And they kind of want to understand the, the, the motivation for why Eurydice decides to do this. Marianne says, Oh, you know, he does it for the memory and he does it because, you know, he truly loves her and he wants to remember her just one last time mm-hmm. and, you know, get a good look at her before she goes. And then Eloise, you know, on the flip side says, um, no, I think that he did it. I forget exactly why she says, but I think that she says, um, you know, Orpheus decided to take, you know, into, you know, the, the power in that situation and, and tell him 
to turn around mm. so that way they can exchange a glance one more time and that way you know she can leave with you know that image of him or mm. something like that and so with that being said you know they have this whole conversation about this and whenever Eloise is going down into her wedding gown she tells um, Marianne specifically turn around mm. just like in the story and as soon as she goes to turn around we see her in the wedding gown, which we've also seen in the apparitions beforehand. And then all of a sudden screen fades out and goes dark. And it's mm-hmm. almost like we are, like, yeah, like the second death. We, you know, Eloise is no more. Orpheus is no more. Mm-hmm. And that was a big bro moment for me when, when I got to, you know, pick it apart and actually realize that I was like, wow, that's really smart. That's really great writing and such effective use of cinematography as well. I really liked the way that they decided to show that. Mm. and show like this like it, it, like we said the second death you know it's it was already insult to injury you know leaving and having to you know separate but then seeing that and recognizing that these characters are no more yeah was even you know e- a bigger twist uh, with the knife. the knife you know <laughs> so yeah next bro moment would be her recreating the painting and putting it up for display hoping that Eloise would see it I feel yeah which yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's definitely. And the last one that we have for, that I have is page twenty-eight. Page twenty-eight. Yeah, crazy. That was, that was that one was the biggest one for me. Me too. Okay. All right. Well, if that's it for the bro moments. Let's get into some facts. Yeah. Um, for the budget, it, it doesn't really t- on IMDb. Uh, I guess it doesn't tell you how much it took to make this movie. Mm. Um, but it does give us some sort of budget or what it made. Um, opening weekend, it made sixty-seven thousand um, dollars. Gross for U.S. and Canada made three point seven million dollars, and then worldwide, it made ten point one million dollars. Wow! So it made quite a bit of money. Um, and I, st- I feel like I don't. I feel like a lot of people haven't watched this movie. Mm. Um, and I think because people s- s- don't want to step that boundary of watching a foreign film. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, that I-, I think that is one thing that definitely hinders people from watching a movie like this which yeah. is unfortunate because yeah. like we said with our parasite episode there is a whole world a film. of cinema out yeah. there that is you know it's it's ready to mm-hmm. to be to be unpacked and to be watched the only thing that you have to get over is one inch of subtitles yep, yep. and it's it's really a, a shame that you know yeah. that, that 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 is something that stops so many people from watching such great movies. Yeah. Well, then, like, yeah, but I th- and I st- I still think it still can make more money. I 100% believe it does. It can. Okay. I have one, and it the movie kind of bo- uh, boasts this uh, this award that it receives in the beginning of the, the film, when the you know, with the with the you know when it shows the production credits yeah. and all the studios and stuff. But this will, this film won the best screenplay award at the Cannes Film Festival, which usually is a is a telltale sign that the film that wins best screenplay at this festival also will win best picture. Mm-hmm. And the you know the 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 film that wins best picture and best screenplay usually goes on to win the Oscar for best film or you know best picture of the year and all that stuff. But this movie came out in 20, 2019 which was a heavy hitter for film, as we all know. Mm -hmm. And while this movie won Best Screenplay at the Cannes Film Festival, Parasite took home the win for Best Picture and the Palme d'Or and all those other prestigious awards at the Cannes. This film wasn't even nominated for any of the... Any awards. Any Oscars, nothing. Not even a nomination. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't nominated for anything, which (sighs) is crazy because the cinematography in this film is amazing. Yeah. It is beautiful. Break it down a bit. What do you mean? I think you have a fact about the way it was shot, right? Oh, I do, yes. Um, so this film was actually shot in 8K mm-hmm. um, to capture the large dynamic range of colors and for the film to feel more contemporary. Whereas um, Celine, I don't know how to say her last Sch- name. Schiama? Schiama felt that a 35 millimeter was timeless. Okay. Or was it a little bit too timeless? Too timeless. Yeah. Felt too timeless. Excuse me. Yeah. Which, but 8K. Yeah, that's something that's. Imagine good. watching this on a 4K TV. Times two. Like, times two. <laughs> times two. <laughs> see every pore. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you can see every grain of sand. You can. 
I'm, I mean, I'm just no, yeah. exaggerating. It's but AK, man. It's crazy definition. It's beautiful. I, I texted this mid, uh, in the middle of it, I texted this to the guy. I said, dude, this movie is beautifully shot. Like, it's, oh, I mean, I just want to be there. Yeah. I, I, I want to play spike ball on top of the hill while looking at the beach. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good time for sure. <laughs> you got any facts, Nick? Uh, other than the the final shot, kind of uh, reminiscent of "Call Me by Your Name," is mm. the you know the slow zoom in of her crying lasts for two minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that was one thing I kind of drew the parallel between "Call Me by Your Name" was the ending, um, but in "Call Me by Your Name." He cries through the credits. He does, yeah. And way longer, he, right? I think so. Yeah. And I remember the first time watching it and crying <laughs> at the end. And I was thinking like the whole time, like, when is this gonna end? Like this is so sad. And just sitting in that moment with him and hearing, I have loved you for the last time. I was like, Oh, dude, this is so sad. Visions of Kitty. I yeah. love that song. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so good. It's but so good. It, it's it reminded me of that and the fact that like we really get to sit with this character and the emotion that they're feeling and you know it really brings that emotion out of other people as well mm -hmm. and uh it's great it's a it's a great ending to the film i think yeah um another one that i have here director Celine siyama and adele heinel i believe i'm saying her name correctly who plays eloise are ex-lovers <laughs> They used to go out, and they had split amicably prior to filming this movie. So it's got to be kind of weird to kind of, like, work with your ex. And, like, on have a, them fall on in a, love with someone else. Yeah, well, and also be it be, like, a love story. Yeah, that is very right? strange. It's kind of strange. Uh, the only other one I have here, if you guys don't have any more, um, originally the lady that played Eloise, uh, Adele Heinel, was promised some of the paintings of her that appeared in the movie. However, it was later decided that the paintings would be exhibited around the world instead. Oh, savage. She didn't get anything? Nope. It's still kind of cool, which, though. I mean, that w how sick would that be? To have to a, have a, a painted yeah. portrait of yourself? Yeah. That would be cool. That would be so sick. I mean, I'm not talking like a painted. I want a portrait like this. Not like those portraits that you see at like the fair or something. No. No, this is like, like, a, like a classic, like almost like, I want to say like Renaissance style. Like I, I would love that. Portrait. Yeah, you know it's it's very. I would feel real. like material girl energy, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have a, over your fireplace, if you have a painted portrait of yourself and you got it in your house, you're one, vain. <laughs> but two, you got money. <laughs> you, got money. Yeah. you got some money, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but that's it for facts with me. For me, me too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about this movie didn't work for you guys? I only wrote one. I didn't write it down, but we talked about it. Um, it was just a little slow for me. Mm -hmm. um, not to the point where like it took me out of the movie. Um, it's just a little slow where it's just, I was like wondering what's what's happening. Okay. Um, and I think that's why I want to rewatch it again. Okay. I, now that I know what's happening. Yeah, I think I I'm on the same boat as you, Abe. I felt when I was watching it that this movie was dragging for me, mm. and that was. Don't be inappropriate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it came right to my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I that was that was something for me when I was watching it. I was just kind of like, you know, I'm a fan of slower burn movies, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect that when I went into this. Mm. I don't know what I think I was expecting a movie like Call Me by Your Name when I went into this, and I think that that's my fault. Mm -hmm. and that's why I do want to have a rewatch for this and having, you know, experienced the movie and, you know, knowing what it is now, I want to go back in with the knowledge that I have in order to fully experience it. Yeah. You know, I kind of like, I can, uh, uh, I like it to like, you know, like when, when, a, when, an, when a new album from an artist comes out, if I listen to it one time through, I cannot immediately be like, oh man, I like that or, yeah. or I love that or here's what I like about it. Here's what I don't like about it. You know, I have to be able to really digest it and listen to it a couple of times and really find out what it is I like, what it is I don't, all that stuff. Sure, yeah. And I think that that's something I need to do with this film. Um, regardless, the way that I felt when I wrote this down, um, I felt that it was very slow because there's very little dialogue. Mm. And I had noticed that there was no music mm. at all. And I know that that was a deliberate choice by the director, which I wasn't aware of at the time. Um, I just felt that like scenes go on in silence for what feels like 
forever sometimes like there will be some dialogue that happens and then there will be like 20 seconds of silence of them just kind of looking at each other and seeing how each other react and I was like why is that here I don't understand you know I why why was it chosen to leave that in and um other things I I I was thinking about I was like okay well maybe it's left in to like create tension like obviously you know you're waiting to find out what's going to happen but then there were some times where like you sit there and wait and then it would cut to another scene Mm -hmm. and I'd be like what was that for like why why did why did we stay there for so long if it was just going to cut to another scene you know um but like I said having experienced the fulfillment knowing that that's what it was going for and me not really catching on to that makes me want to rewatch it and really go back and you know give it the respect that it deserves for sure the one thing i was thinking about when i thought you know what didn't work for me i think it would be i think it might have been more effective an effective ending if it ended at the 28 when you see the 28 oh when man that would have been a harsh ending and it just boom leaves you there what do you think about that that would have been wild that i would have i think i would have cried at that point i just feel like i feel like that's such a natural stopping place that would have had me I would have had me up out of my seat, up out of my seat, going, "Ah!" right, (laughs) screaming because that would have, that would have, that ending would have made me go and like sink in my chair and and react crazy because I would have been like, she never forgot, like you know, like if that would have been great. Yeah, that's the last thing she saw. I don't know. I think they give maybe a little too much at the end. Mm-hmm. Where they, I feel like it would have been a little bit more tasteful to just boom end it there and just be like a mic drop, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But we do get this l- long drawn out yeah. cry sequence, which is still beautiful. Yeah, it still works for me. But I was thinking, you know, could it be more effective if they did it a different way? Mm. Okay, but yeah, that's it for me. Same here. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's all I had. All right, I love it. <laughs> what are we loving about this movie? What did work, uh, dude? How beautiful this movie is! Yeah, the freaking colors. Yeah, I, the, the colors are so vibrant and bright. The landscape. I love it. Yeah, that was one I, thing that really jumped out at me, especially whenever, um, whenever Marianne is on the boat. I was like, dude, that water looks beautiful. Yeah. Like, and then seeing the colors of the dresses that are used, the colors of my, the landscape and all the fire, like yeah. everything. I was like, man, I love the use of color in this. And it, it all is because of the cinematography and the use of 8K and all that stuff. Yeah. My favorite still is the one that I showed you guys, and it's when Eloise is, is looking at, at the camera. Yeah. And it's, you just see her eyes. Dude. And then you see the background. It's it's kind of blurred, but it's, you can tell what it is. Mm-hmm. But it's so beautiful. It's oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love it. It's seeping with color. I freaking love it. Though, it's like, you don't think – how detailed the eyes are but in this film you could see like marianne has like i got brown and some green and yellow highlights like you get to see all of that yeah they decided to film it i mean in 8k uh, to get all of the dynamic range and it works so flawlessly yeah i loved it one of the things i have to say i really enjoyed about this film was the writing yeah the writing is deeply impactful it's so elegant uh, yeah and and like like nick says it is like to the t what i think like French people are like mm-hmm. they're very like wise with their words and they know what they want to say before they say it and they speak in a way that is like you know so classy and yeah. all that stuff you know um but one of the things I have to say about the writing specifically is I I really liked the nuance presented in this love story mm-hmm. I thought that it was very interesting also how we look at this building of a relationship that's based on a lie mm-hmm. like you know, in the beginning of the film, I'm just a companion. Heloise is like, oh, this person is just hired to walk around with me, uh, but I'm slowly starting to fall for her. And then once she finds out, like, oh, I've been lying to you. Straight up. Yeah. But, that sucks. Yeah. And it's like, man, like, usually that would be a deal breaker, but it, it's not. And, and it's it's something that actually keeps the relationship going. Uh-huh. And it's like, okay, well, you're a painter. Okay. Well, I'll pose for you. And we can like then you can truly see me for who I am, yeah. and um, I really liked that the building of the relationship, um, despite the lie. And then once that lie was, you know, once the truth came out, the relationship only continued to blossom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I and I really enjoyed that. I also really enjoyed the setup of Eloise 
and how she is supposed to be painted without her knowledge. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. Did you like those scenes too where, you know, she's still in disguise and then she'll be sitting on the beach and she'll put her hand in a certain yeah, way. And she starts sketching and her Marietta hands. And Marietta will be like, I see that. And yeah. then go and sketch it in secret. Yeah. I lo I, I like that yeah, I really lot. did as well. I, I, I love the specific scene where she's talking about her ear. Yeah. And, and she's just, like, the ear, like, it's covered with hair. Sometimes it's not. You really have to study it and, like, recognize, like, its curvature and how it works and all this stuff and everything. And I was like, man, like, this lady's truly an artist and, like, knows exactly, like, the details to pay attention to and, like, a, a really talented artist to be able to do that all from memory. Yeah. So. That's, excuse me, that's one of the reasons why I didn't mind the slower pacing. I almost feel like it forces you to to notice the silhouettes of the, the characters, to notice the structures there. Mm. And it almost kind of makes you, like, it, like, forces you to, to think like Marianne thinks. Okay. You know what I mean? That's And that's kind of the way I interpreted some of those longer takes mm. because we're forced to see, like, there's specific scenes where you just see her, her side profile and you see how her nose kind of curls in and all that stuff. And, and I'm no artist, but I can, th I can think, Oh, if Marianne would see this, she would notice this and, and sketch it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was kind of a, an interesting way to get the audience engaged in some kind of artistic thought process like that, that Marianne would, would be going through. Nice. Mm. I like that. Which I enjoyed. And I, I normally don't like slow burn movies, but this one, for some reason, man, I was completely and totally engaged the entire time. Nice. And I think it, it really hinges on the chemistry between the two characters. Oh, yeah. Which is and palpable. Oh, gosh. I felt it the entire way. Uh, it was perfectly believable to me. It, it it was, I mean, they're perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, I have to say, too, it, this is my last thing that did work, because I think the acting here is great. Gosh, and there's man. really only, like, like I want to say four people in this movie that like really play a role it yep. being mom, Eloise, Marianne and Sophie. That's it. And each one of them are such heavy hitters. And I, I have to say, I really liked Eloise in this movie mm -hmm. and I really loved how much she decides to challenge Marianne and the way that she thinks and all this stuff. And I, I just have to say just great acting across the board from oh, everybody. Yeah. Across the board for sure. Anything else for what did work for you guys? I think this movie is pretty rewatchable, and let me explain. I explain myself. I don't know what I'm saying. The reason why I say that is because now that we've seen, like I've seen it, I want to know if I notice smaller details, mm. and then I just want to keep on going, look at the smaller details. Okay. Try to find this. Try mm. to find that, and like I like I don't have to work tomorrow, so maybe I'll rewatch it again, see if I can see. <laughs> Littler details, yeah, to make me see the the things that makes her fall in love with her, like things like that. So I would say like this movie is pretty rewatchable. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I could probably sit and rewatch that. It was a two-hour movie, but to me, it didn't feel. It that did long. not feel like two hours. I thought I, sp I like like I said, I threw it on when I was gonna about to watch a streamer, and I thought it was only an hour that passed by, and then I look at my phone, and I was like, oh shoot, it's one o'clock already. How the heck is it one? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I just, I, I enjoyed it. I, I was really engaged because it was, again, seeing those people be so passionate about something. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, give me more. I love this. You yeah. know, I love seeing people be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. All right. If that's it for what did work, who wins this movie? Yeah. I put Adele. I did too. Me, too. Me as well. Eloise. Yeah. She Eloise is, is phenomenal. She's yeah. so phenomenal. I love that she's yeah. that antagonistic force, but it's still but she, very romantic. Well, and she's also like, I don't even think there's an antagonist in this movie. Yeah, no, there's yeah, no. Like, no. There's, like there's, it's two protagonists, yep. and they are they're on an equal playing field, and they're just trying to build one another up like mm -hmm. the whole time. And they're trying to see who's the main character. Yeah, they're the main character in each story, but they're the main character in their story. Yeah, I guess the antagonist would be just like society in general. Yeah, the mom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, mom, the mom is, is forcing her to get married and forcing uh, the sister. It's all the sister's fault. <laughs> it's kind of, um, uh, I mean, it kind of is to I pass to on the it. fate. But that's yeah. the only uh, that's the only way she thought she could get out of it. Yeah, I cannot Which escape. She's probably chanting that same thing. Automatically, be a red flag. Red flag. True. Yeah, very true. 
should not be forced. All right. Or anything like that. So if Adele Hanel, I hope I'm saying her name correctly, wins the movie, what are some themes for this movie? I just put the power the first love has. Nice. Or the power the first love holds. Yeah. I think it would say something along the same lines. Yeah. yeah. I just, the importance of having passion. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. I like that. I like that one too. Yeah. All right. What are we going to rate it? <laughs> Look at me. I'm always like, I, I gave it an eight. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um, I liked it a lot. I don't think this is a movie for everyone. Okay. Um, and I do think it's rewatchable. Um, there's certain people that I would recommend it to, and for that I give it an eight. Okay. I'm giving this one a nine. Okay. I really freaking enjoyed it both times. It, it really ch- like, it, it's a movie I shouldn't like. But I love it. You know what I mean? I love Why it. Why shouldn't you like it? Like, it's slow. It's got a lot of nuance. and Not your typical movie. Not my typical movie, but y- and yet I am still captured by it. Mm. Well, yeah, but that's just, like, my favorite movie. And it's kind of crazy. I think it's a little bit biased. I'm like, a, I have a little bit of bias to it because I was like, oh, I want to watch that movie. I want to see this movie. Oh, I got it. Now I want to watch it. I'm immediately going to like it more than someone who's just like, where's the video on fire? All right, let's turn it on. Okay. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it, I feel like there's a little bit of, of, of something there mm. that's mm. like that. I'm going to give it a seven. We're just off the first watch. I enjoyed it. There were some things that I missed, unfortunately, um, which is why I do want to go rewatch it again. And I for feel sure. like that rating will change for me yeah. once I hit, hit, get a rewatch in, um, which would be interesting, like to revisit episodes we've done and see if our movie our opinions have changed yeah, on anything like, like that but I say we like further on like we just do an episode and just talk about the movies that we've done mm. and then and be like, like you still feel about the same about that yeah okay. I'm like, uh, no <laughs> <laughs> but well, we would have to listen to every episode again I yeah I'd be down yeah but um yeah I think I'm gonna stick with the seven for this one okay right. so all right that's the end of the episode you guys so if you did stick all the way to the end we do appreciate it um, make sure that you guys are interacting with the content. We, you know, really appreciate it when you guys are liking, subscribing, um, saving the videos, hitting the bell notification, all that stuff that we do on YouTube. We've seen a lot of traffic there recently, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, we also do still post all of our episodes on podcast apps as well, whether that be Spotify, Google, um, Apple podcasts, all that stuff. Um, if you still listen to our podcasts on those as well, we appreciate it just as much yeah um continue to interact with the stuff over there as well with rate and reviews and all that stuff it really does help get the podcast into more people's hands Mm -hmm. um when when people see that something has a little bit of credibility that goes a long way especially like you know if you go to on amazon and you buy you're looking for something to buy what do you do you go to the reviews so you want five stars yep i trust it Let's, let's give it a shot exactly so it really does help out whenever you guys are interacting with the stuff and letting people know that you're liking what's going on here or you're letting us know exactly what you would want us to either stop doing or to continue doing uh, yeah. mm-hmm. something that we do well or something we could possibly change to try to make it better. So Yeah, if you can think of a movie that probably wouldn't be on any of our radars too, send oh, it yeah. our way. Send Rex. For We're real. We're always looking for recommendations. I, I can tell you... Some of the time, at least once a week, I'm on Letterboxd just scrolling through I'm lists. Like, okay, what what movie do I want to watch and talk about? Yeah. yeah, or I'm think I'm looking for movies that I've never heard of, and I'm yeah, like, exactly. oh, that looks cool. Add it to my list. You know, yeah. all that stuff. So, um, as always, everything can be found in every episode description we have here. That means all of our methods of contact, all that stuff, uh, all of our letterbox accounts, the Instagram, email. If you want to talk to us, get in contact with us, or just reach out and get plugged into the community that we have here. Um, follow us on all that stuff so that way you can do so. Yeah. But other than that, we're going to go ahead next? and introduce the next episode, which is Abe's pick. It is my pick. And I am choosing a movie that I I used to watch this quite often. So I'm going to see if it still holds up what I remember it to. Um, and it's a 2005 movie, Four Brothers. Okay. Um, and I think I remember when this movie came out, and I think I wanted to watch it as a kid. But it was rated R, and my parents, it is rated and my parents, R. <laughs> and my yeah. parents wouldn't let me. Um, so yeah, it's streaming on anything. It it is. It's streaming on Netflix, and it's there until the end of June. But then it's also on Paramount Plus. Okay. Okay. So you have time to watch it. Um, 
And the cast is kind of weird, like Mark Wahlberg, Tyrese Gibson. Isn't Andre 3000? Andre 3000's in it. He's about to go, hey! <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sophia Vargara's on it. It's it's a wild cast. But from what I remember, I liked it a lot. But I'm excited to see it again and see if I still like it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. It's a first watch for me. I've never, ever heard of it. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Not even. One of my favorite songs that I will listen I listen to probably almost every, almost once a day, I believe. Jeez. Um, what, is it, what is it? Is it Hey Ya by Outkast? Because that song's <laughs> a slapper. It is. Hey. <laughs> Would not fault you for listening to It's a Marvin Gaye song. Okay. And it's called uh, Troubled Man. Okay. It's such a good song. I, I don't know. I like it a lot. A lot. And. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm go. I'm not even gonna watch a trailer. Me I'm gonna either. go into this. Watch the trailer. It might be cringe. Completely and totally blind. Yeah, me too. And then just see how it goes from there. <laughs> yep. Same. But yeah. So it's streaming on Netflix. You said or Paramount Plus. Netflix or Paramount Plus. Four Brothers. All right. So make sure you guys check out Four Brothers uh, before next week, so that way you guys are up to speed. And uh, yeah, as always, this has been the Film Bros. Film Bros podcast. Film Bros. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the Film Bros podcast. Thank you guys and good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.